Welcome to Unit 1 of Chemistry 101 at Goodwin College. So today Unit 1 covers Chapter 1 in your textbook, and Chapter 1 primarily deals with scientific measurement, so Chapter 1 is on measurement. It may seem a little strange to have an entire chapter devoted to measurement, especially since this is a chemistry course, so we'll eventually get to chemistry in Unit 2, but we need to lay some groundwork before we can actually get to the chemistry, and the groundwork is measurement. So since this is a chemistry course, I want, and we're going to talk about measurement, I want to briefly talk about what chemistry is. According to your textbook, and I think your textbook has a reasonably good definition of chemistry, chemistry is the study of the composition, structure, properties, and reactions of matter. And that's on page three in your textbook. I like the definition, but it's, it's a little bit fancy. So what does that really mean in English? And to address what it means, I want to break the definition down into uh, its component pieces. So, first of all, your textbook says that chemistry is the study of matter. Matter is just fancy talk for the material world. Physical things that we can touch and feel and sense. That's matter. Second, your book says that chemistry studies the composition of matter. That just means that chemistry is interested in figuring out what physical things are actually made of. Your book also says that chemistry studies the structure of matter. This point has a couple of meanings. First of all, it means that chemistry is interested in studying why different materials might have different shapes. So, for example, why do snowflakes always have six sides? What causes the snowflake to always have that type of shape? Uh, second, another example is that chemistry is interested in understanding why some physical things are liquids at room temperature, like water, and why they freeze and turn into, a solid, uh, into solid materials when it gets cold enough. What's actually happening to water when you cool it down? Why does it turn into a solid? Chemistry is also interested in answering those types of questions. Your book also points out that chemistry studies the properties of matter. This is maybe a general description of, of everything else that I pointed out in the last two slides, but basically studying the properties of matter means chemistry is interested in understanding all of the features and characteristics of physical things. So, as an example, what temperature does ice melt? Uh, what temperature does ice melt at? What temperature does water boil at? Why do helium balloons float in the air instead of sink to the ground? Again, chemistry is interested in understanding and trying to answer these types of questions. Finally, chemistry studies reactions of matter. So, what this means is that sometimes you can mix two or more different materials together and they'll turn into some new materials they will react with each other to make something new and maybe something unexpected. Chemistry is especially interested in making new materials from old ones. At the bottom of the screen you can see two pictures that hopefully illustrate chemical reactions or, or the products of chemical reactions. The first one, the one on the left, shows that if you mix uh, certain two colorless liquids they will actually mix together and create something a little unexpected. They make a cloudy yellow substance. You don't need to know what the colorless liquids are, you don't need to know what they're made of, you don't need to know what the yellow substance is. But it's enough just to know that this is a pretty vivid example of how two different materials can make something new and unexpected. The second picture shows an iPhone. Hopefully you know what an iPhone is. Um, and you may or may not realize it, but there's a lot of chemistry that goes into making a phone like this. Many of you know that the glass on, on the iPhone is resistant to grease, it's uh, resistant to scratches. It's extremely difficult to break the glass. In fact, the glass is so much stronger than traditional glass that it's called Gorilla, gra gorilla Glass. Uh, but all of these features, the grease resistance, the scratch resistance, the strength of the glass, were developed by chemists who were trying to make new forms of glass that could be useful under different circumstances. Here they made glass that was so strong that you can use it on a phone and drop it and a lot of times it won't break. So hopefully you have a, a beginning appreciation of what chemistry is. We'll get into much more detail about chemistry soon enough, but today's unit is on measurement. So we'll spend the rest of the time talking about measurement. We're going to start with section 1.3 in your textbook, which is titled Units of Measurement. So here's uh, section 1.3 in the textbook. Um, the photo here just shows a bunch of things in the everyday world that are actually measured. So for example, 
uh, apparently the photo was taken at 8.30 a.m. So someone had to measure the time when the photo was taken. Uh, the temperature outside when the photo was taken was 72 degrees Fahrenheit. So someone had to measure the temperature. There's another measurement. Um, the man on the left is carrying a 26-pound backpack. Again, somebody had to measure the weight of his backpack. And there are many other measurements there as well. So they're trying to point out to you that you see and use measurements every day.